Ilya Otayanu, <laughs> Uh, who's going to present research results and outcomes of the project, a phraseographical methodology and model for an online corpus-based multilingual collocations dictionary platform. Wow. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So my, as I was saying, my colleagues couldn't be here, especially the last ones. We worked with the Chinese language, so uh, I want. I'm, I didn't feel so comfortable to talk about the Chinese language. Uh, so uh, this is the outline of my presentation. So first of all, I will briefly describe the project. I'll t briefly also describe the methodology. Uh, I'll talk about some results and uh, on outcomes, focus on the collocations dictionary system we developed for this project. And in fact, we'll talk about some future work. Okay, so our aim is to develop a phraseograph phraseographical methodology and model for this uh, multilingual collocations dictionary platform. That's our main goal. Uh, so for this presentation, we'll describe, uh, briefly describe the project and our view of collocations, because we had to make some adjustments, and we'll show some results we have achieved so far. In fact, the first phase of the project uh, finished uh, last year, the, the end of last year, and we are, for, uh, we are writing the second proposal, the forward proposal, uh, and we will add up more languages, I will show you. So this is our team, so from Brazil, it's me and two other guys from the computer science area. I'm not a computational linguist, just to let you know. And these are the guys who are working with the Spanish. And the last one, um, Marcos Garcia, he's the one, he's the computational linguist and he worked with all the extraction, the domain extraction for the project. Uh, Marie-Claude Lom is working with French, with Canadian French. And uh, from University of Granada, we have Antonio Pames Bertrand and uh, Jose Manuel Passos. They are, even though they are Spanish, they are working with Chinese, right? Because there are many Chinese students there. Uh, and then for the, the second phase of the project, we are adding up more languages, Italian. Uh, so two professors from University of Bologna will join us uh, from Ger oops, there's a mistake, Germany and uh, European Portuguese as well. So how do we view collocations? So we have uh, two, we view collocations under two approaches, the statistic oriented approach, the one you already, you are used to, right? The usual one. But as Toybert has uh, mentioned, being statistically significant is not enough to identify a combination of words mm -hmm. as collocations. So uh, because of that, we were also we are also describing collocations under a phraseological approach. So we view collocations as pervasive, recurrent, conventionalized combinations consisting of a base and a collocate, which are lexically and syntactically fixed to a certain degree. And we were discussing that. We may change our view, but so far uh, we view collocations as being partially compositional because its base maintains its meaning. However, the collocate may take on a special meaning only when combined with the base. So based on some writers in here, uh, I can remember an example, it's a specialized collocation, but for example, shares, and if you say issue, shares, the word issue, even though we understand the literal meaning of issue combined with shares, but it takes on a new meaning, it means sell shares. So that's why we're thinking of being it a partially compositional. So we are also uh, thinking of collocations as being a less or more restricted, that they have a less or more or less restricted collocational range. So the more generic, the more generic a word is, the more senses it attracts, right? So it has a higher, I mean, the higher its collocational range, the more senses it, it attracts. And the more specific a word is, the fewer senses it attracts. So it has a lower collocational range. So this is the taxonomy we, we've used uh, so far. Of course, it varies according to the languages. So this is for English and Portuguese, a little bit different. And now I'm um, thinking, this is the, 
the, the platform. Uh, in fact, we're still working on the end user platform. So we intend to launch it by October for the first America Lex in Brazil. We're giving a workshop, so it has to be ready by, by August. So um, what is Platco? What do we mean by that? So it's a platform that aims to offer a new way to search collocation. So that's why the end user platform is not ready yet, because we're, we're thinking of different ways of uh, using the platform. Uh, a user-friendly platform, a more customized platform with a new format. So it will seek to meet its users' needs with higher customization of the structure of the dictionaries. And it's a production dictionary, so they're all production dictionaries that can provide help to users and contribute to the development of their collocational knowledge and competence. So our proposal is based on the functional theory of lexicography, based on these writers here. So both the procedures chosen for the selection, the organization, the presentation of lexicographical data, as well as the determination of the content, form, and access routes are adapted and subordinated to the preferences of users. So these are our users. It's, I mean, we have a wide variety of, we thought of different users because all members of the, the project work with uh, in-service and pre-service, pre-service and in-service teachers. And we also work with uh, learner and professional translators. So I teach in a BA in translation and BA in English language. And all the other members also have experience with both teaching and translation. We thought of material developers if they want to have access to the dictionary, so to prepare their material. Uh, researchers and lexicographers, if they need any other piece of information. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why they will be customized. So users may choose to have access to like more specific information, like they can generate um, uh, bars and graphs uh, related to the frequency of the collocations or to statistical measures. So these are, I mean, more like researchers and lex lexicographers would like to have that, or the taxonomy of collocations and so on and so forth. So we are also carrying out users' needs, so to see what they expect from this dictionary, what they wish this dictionary would have, among other questions we have. So we are just checking if they know they have a, ever heard of collocations, because language learners, for example, may not have heard of the term collocations, and they may not want to use the dictionary. So we're just trying to work on that. So the methodology is based on the automatic approach described in Garcia et al and a manual review and validation of the extracted data made by us, lexicographers, and our students. So we built up a large corpus for each of the five languages so far, so it was automatically compiled using different source data, and they were parsed with UDPipe. So automatic retrieval of the basis, so we focus on collocation collocation types, like with th three morphosyntactic classes of bases, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. So here we have some, I forgot to include the adjectives. Uh, we have, for example, uh, in English, there were it, it, so approximately 10,000 uh, nouns were extract, extracted. That's for the first phase, okay, there are more than 30 or 40,000 extracted. So we are working with the, f I mean, the first phase, we chose the first 10,500 nouns or uh, verbs, 5,000 verbs. So because we are reviewing all that amount of data. And then out of 10,000 in English, for example, we uh, deleted some of them, which are not uh, interesting for the research and would, would not regenerate collocations. So we have about uh, 8,700 nouns in English, for example. And then we had the same percentage of uh, deletion for the other languages as well, except for Chinese, because it had some problems with the Chinese, had to review some uh, methodological aspects in order to improve that, the results. So we have so far these, this amount of, this number of collocations that were extracted out of those nouns, adjectives, and verbs. So it is kind of balanced, like 71,000 mm -hmm. collocations in Spanish, 60,000 collocations in French, etc. Okay, so we are also, we also extracted 
uh, examples. So far, we, work, we are working on eight examples. So we are reviewing these examples. So we intend to keep at least from five to eight examples in the dictionary. So we based on Kilgariff et al. Uh, 2008 20, and Kozem et al. in 2019. I won't go into many details because we presented part of the methodological aspects in uh, ELEX 2021, so you can read the, our paper in the proceedings. Uh, so we, all automatic, we are also working with automatic translations of collocations. And let's see a few results. So first of all, before I forget, I mean, there we have a team of reviewers, so that's the complexity of, of the work because uh, to be part of the project, we have to have a team working to help us. So there are about 25 people working with us. I mean, the, the coordinators, and we have PhD students, masters, undergrads working with us. Some of them have scholarships, like in Brazil, for example, some of them do, some others don't, because we don't have scholarships for everybody, unfortunately. So we are working with all those people, and it takes a lot of work. So, so uh, as we have some students working with us, so we decided to uh, ma uh, make up, a, set up a criteria for collocation selection. It's a very simple one to start with. Of course, students have get in touch with, uh, they have to read a lot about collocations, how to identify collocations, and then we set up some, some criteria so that they could uh, focus on, so what they should exclude or not. But we also have meetings because, uh, there are many doubts, and then sometimes we also have doubts, even the coordinators, right? So, so we had f f some candidates which were not uh, collocations. For example, there were many combinations like same and another word, or some, first, or any. But we, th this way, I mean, we just used the dictionary writing system. We chose, for example, some, and then there were like 330 cases of some and plus now, so we deleted them all, so we could easily delete them very uh, quickly. So, so far, there were like 10,000 uh, candidates deleted in Spanish, and then we have fewer deleted candidates in Portuguese and English because our, so we can choose different ways of reviewing that. So we decided for Portuguese and English that we're going to review everything. We are, we are reviewing the examples, we're checking the translations, if the translations are suitable or not. Uh, if they are not, we're proposing new ones. And a student is working on the definition, the senses of each entry. And for the Spanish, the Spanish uh, scholarship holder has reviewing all the candidates. So she's deleting the ones which are not collocations. And later on, she will go backwards and then review in more detail. So uh, I mentioned the taxonomy of collocations. Uh, however, we found out that we should also include this type of collocation. We're calling uh, complex collocations, especially for, for the Portuguese and Spanish. So we have, for example, a longo prazo, which is um, an, adver um, an adverbial phrase, for example, in Portuguese or in Spanish. And as we have an adverbial phrase and a verb, for the verb plus an adverbial phrase, we're calling these combinations as complex collocations. So in English, we would have, because long term is not a noun phrase, it's, it's considered to be an adjective. So we don't, we don't in English, it's not a complex collocation. So it, so these, a term, this terminology will vary according to the language. So we have a few examples like uh, longo prazo plus uh, a, a noun plus locução adverbial, that we call an adverbial phrase. And then we also have adjective plus adverbial phrase in Spanish and Portuguese. And we have a free combination in English. So I think we're running out of time. We have some more examples of a special needs uh, students, for example, uh, and then we have also an, an, adjective, an adjective phrase in Spanish and Portuguese, so they are considered to be uh, complex collocations, but not in English. So a few more examples as we're running out of time. Okay, so and this is the collocations dictionary writing system. Uh, so we designed this because we needed something very specific for our research. So you wanted to enhance the post-editing 
of all the automatically uh, retrieved data. So, so there are lots of functions here, so I will show you, better show you. Uh, if you need more information about how it was developed, uh, so in terms of computational development, so it was built using languages for the current and widespread programming, such as Java, uh, HTML, and JavaScript. So for the storage, constitutive deletion of entry, the relation data model with PostgreSQL software was used in conjunction with SQL and, uh, language. And concepts of user experience UX were applied to provide a good experience for the lexicographers. OK, as we're running out of time, let me show you how the, the, the dictionary writing system is. So this is, I mean, this, the first page, you have all the information regarding the entries, uh, the collocations, etc. The taxonomies we have already created for all languages. So here, if you click on head words, you have the entries, right? So we have a list of, uh, mm -hmm. of a head words, we can choose the language we're working with. So we can click and take a look at what information we have about on that entry. We can also register new head words in case, in this case, because uh, reviewers have a different access from us uh, coordinators. So we have access to all data and then we can add up new taxonomies, morphosyntactic structures, but they can't. But when they are analyzing, for example, the translation of the collocations, uh, Sometimes it's necessary to create a new entry because the, color, the translation was not suitable. So they have to create a new base, a new uh, collocation. So they have to register. So we have also the senses of the collocations because we're working, we have different senses and they mm -hmm. will uh, later on uh, add, okay, this collocation is related to sense number one or this one is related to sense number two and so on and so forth. So the corresponding head words. So this is when we have the to register a collocation, but as it was everything automatic extracted, everything is already there. So this is just a, an empty screen, but uh, we have everything already inserted except for taxonomy, morphosyntactic structure that we just click. We also have, for example, this was also automatically inserted there because we extracted different um, statistical measure, so it's already there. So here have examples as well, so they review and then we suggest new ones. So the, here, here are working with the, the, the translation. So in this case, I wanted to, to have this. For example, some collocations are translated into a, uh, a single lexical unit. So if it's, if it's so, we click on it because later on, if somebody wants to research the number of collocations which were translated in the target language into a single lexical unit, we can generate a report and check the number or which ones. Or if a collocation was translated into a free combination in, dark, in the target language, so we can also click on that so that we can work with the data later on. Uh, so here we have status because we will work on that. So if it's yellow, we know that the collocations are under review. And then uh, we have different phases. Red, it's, it hasn't been reviewed yet. Nobody's reviewing them. Uh, phase two, the yellow one is under review. And green, when it's, uh, it's been reviewed by two people. But even so, uh, when guys have doubts, we have to talk. Sometimes they disagree, and then a third person has to analyze the data again so that we can approve, or in this case, approving, or we can also disapprove the collocations. Okay, so the, we also have the taxonomy, as I mentioned. We have already inserted the different languages, but we can add up new ones if necessary. Uh, okay, I think we won't have time to talk about that, but we're still developing that as we're working with different languages. So they are developing uh, this system of uh, optimizing the translation of entries and collocations in the system. So if you have a collocation in, port in English, for example, develop a plan and desenvolver un plano in Portuguese, and then the system will identify that desarrollar un plan was translated into develop a plan. So the system will ask, can we say that develop a plan uh, is a, an equivalent to, desenvolve, to de desarrollar un plan in Spanish, and then the reviewer have to click on that. 
Let me skip that. So we have, okay, we're running out of time. So we have, for example, fazer diferença. The system said, okay, can you say that it's faire différence uh, in French? Or faire diferencia? Or make difference in English? Because it has identify these collocations in the system, so we can click on that. And we also developed a new function last month because we need a grammatical relation for some languages. Uh, well, for example, for English, adverbial particles, so we had the set, uh, plan, and then we need the up, include the up there, so we just click on grammatical relation and add up, up an adverbial particle in English, for example. Uh, I think I have already mentioned that. Okay, so we're still working on the end user platform. This is not the layout, of course, it will be a more, we hope it will be a more modern one, but we have all those pieces of information and we intend to have something different, let's hope. So future work, we need for, we need, still need for carrying out some minor improvements of the collocations dictionary system. It's much better now after like six months. Uh, some macro, microstructure decisions may still be reshaped yeah, with a view to best adjust to the dictionaries and to the to the new languages as well. So we're intent, as I said, we intend to launch the end user platform by October and then, of course, have some improvements. But we will include all those collocations that were extracted and users will know whether they were reviewed or not, but we, are, we decided to do so. We're uh, displaying everything. Okay, so thank you very much for being here. If you have questions. Hello, um, yeah, do we have uh, questions? Oh, uh, I think you, you will first. Thank you very much. Is it on? Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Very interesting presentation and project. Um, I'm wondering, um, if you uh, restrict yourself to the conventionalized uh, collocations, um, don't you miss out on, uh, for instance, translations that are not conventionalized in the, in, the, in another language? Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with that problem? Yeah, in fact, I mean, uh, we have to, the, the, the aim is to find a conventionalized equivalent. If the system has automatically generated a uh, uh, translational option, which is not suitable, which is not frequently used in the target language, we have to propose a different one. So the reviewer, we have to work on that. Uh, for example, the examples I was I was talking about about the when we generated. Let's see if I can. I didn't have time to focus on all of them. Um, let's see if I can find them. Yeah, I think it was here. Uh, okay, for example, we have uh, in Portuguese we had uh, caminhar ao ar livre or caminhar al aire libre, but in English we don't have to say to go I mean, open air. We don't say open because if you are going for a walk, it's open air. So we are not going to use it. that was a translation, an English translation. So uh, we have a walk and they go for a walk. So we had to adjust to what's used in English. So we cannot have a literal translation for that. So the, the aim is we have to have this thing in mind. We have to translate into something that is conventionalized, frequently used, also work with statistical measures. I mean, does it have a, a high statistical measure, a specific one, maybe log likelihood or T-score, whatever, we can work on stati different statistical measures as well, but that's our aim. It has to be frequent because translators will use that so they cannot use a collocation which is not frequently used in that target, specific target, target audience. It takes time because sometimes students also have doubts. I mean, should we translate that into that? But the, 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 the aim is think of something that is frequently used in the target audience. So no literal uh, correspondence give equivalence. And so okay. I don't know if I have Thank you. answered. Uh, if I remember well, you said that the project provides a brand new way to search collocations. A brand what new is, way? What is this way exactly? Oh, okay. Well, uh, I didn't have too much time to explain and I unfortunately don't have the end user, or at least the prototype to show you. But the idea is, for example, we are not going to have 
uh, that layout of traditional dictionaries, for example, we don't intend to. That's why it's been difficult, because the students who are the, the guys from the computer science who are working with that, we cannot tell, them, okay, take a look at that dictionary. It's something like that. No, we want to do some, we hope we can have this different project uh, product. So, for example, it has to be like customized. So you, you, you're using your mouse here, for example, then you click on the entry, and then you see different senses. And then you can, you can click on the sense you want to. So, but I suppose you don't, you're not sure exactly, okay, you chose the sense, you don't, you don't need to click on it. You just put the mouse on that sense, and then you visualize some collocations, so verbal collocations, adjective, whatever. And then you may, oh, okay, that's, I think that's the one I, I need. So then you click on that. So you may choose to click on that one. You may choose to click, okay, now I want to see everything. I want to see different senses. I want to see, and then examples. So you, of course, sometimes an entry may have like 120 collocations. So you won't, you won't be able to see them all. So you just have a, a view of some of them. And then if you want more information, you can click on it. And then you have all access to those different types of collocations. And then, for example, <clears throat> Some people say, well, you shouldn't display taxonomy because who's interested in the taxonomy of, of taxonomy of collocations? And then I talked to some uh, PhD students, Matt, no, we, we wish we had that. We want to see this, the, the morphosyntactic structure. Okay, so this audience wants to, but language learners don't. So they don't, if they don't want to see that, they won't see them because it will pollute the screen, yeah? So for one last question. <laughs> Thank you. Question is, how do you Thank get you. the English equivalents? Uh, well, they were automatically extracted, but I ah, know this one. This one was proposed by and, a student. The previous one with uh, with uh, Livre. Ah, okay. Because there is an English equivalent that is very similar. Ah, what is, what, which one is it? Uh, the, the one with the fresh, the one with the uh, uh, free air, the previous one. Ah, okay. Just a minute, please. Oh, no. I think it's afterward. This yeah. one. Yeah. There's an English equivalent that would uh, be right there. It's uh, go get a f get some fresh air. Get a fresh air? Get some fresh air. Get some, but get some fresh air, does it imply, for example, uh, walk as well? Because uh, I think it's not the same. It does. It does. You, you don't go there. You, you, you don't go on a bike or on, on a car. So, yeah, that's exactly my question. So, how do you get to these? Oh, no, in this case, that's why I wrote English translation, because in this case, I shouldn't proposed. It was not automatically extracted. Yeah. Because we have, I mean, there, I mean it's, it's not 100%, yeah. right? And also, of course. Like in, in the left column, we see register, register collocations, but walk is not a collocation. So uh, uh, there's a bit of a go mismatch for, in categories. I mean, no, no. go for a walk. The left column, the, the leftmost column, registered collocations. You have as English translation. Oh, no, walk. yeah, I saw it. it was a mistake. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this was a mistake, yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. But go for a walk is a collocation anyway, yes. yes. So let's try our bigger walking. Okay, thank you.